Hi students, uh, welcome to this turbo machine uh, centrifugal pumps and centrifugal compressors chapter module which is module number 5. So in this video we will see what is the work done by impeller. So coming to this work done, uh, centrifugal pump acts as a reverse of an inward radial flow reaction turbine, some assumptions that we are taking. So before deriving this work done, assumptions made for analysis are, my first one is liquid enters the impeller in radial direction okay so water enters in the radial direction or axial direction so it is not the tangential direction so one thing the so second assumption is no energy losses in impeller due to friction and eddy formation so say, uh, we imagine that the uh, what you call the impellers or veins are uh, uh, smooth and the inlet and exit will be the same so there will not be any friction in the uh, veins or blades otherwise uh, vr1 relative velocity vr1 is equal to vr2 if the if we consider friction then vr1 is not equal to vr2 but in our case so in our study of this uh, impeller we understand that the impeller will be frictionless and then liquid enters without shock okay so this we can uh, avoid uh, this one because uh, sometimes because of the flow of uh, water is um, turbulent and the uh, impeller will undergo shock so but in our study we understand that there is uh, no shock enters without shock so work done uh, u1 is equal to this is a um, uh, velocity component of absolute velocity and uh, the otherwise linear velocity or um, uh, peripheral velocity so we can call it as linear velocity Le linear velocity is equal to omega into r1 so uh, omega indicates the uh, rotations number of rotation into that speed into radians per second into r that is how much radius and u2 is equal to omega into r2 so next one is mass of water striking per second so how much mass is striking the impeller that is equal to rho a v1 so where rho is equal to density of water a is equal to area of the jet and v1 is equal to velocity in meters per second velocity of water which is striking the blade so if you take the mass flow rate of water striking per second is equal to rho into a into v1 so next one is momentum of water striking the veins at inlet that is rho a v1 into vw1 where vw1 is equal to virl velocity at inlet so if you take any momentum of water striking the veins at inlet which is uh, rho a v1 into vw1 the same way for outlet rho a v1 into vw2 next one is angular momentum of water striking the veins at inlet angular momentum if they t if you consider the angular momentum then rho a v1 into vw1 into r1 capital r1 which indicates the radius of the rotor and at outlet rho a v1 into vw2 into r2 so where vw1 is equal to v1 cos alpha vw2 is equal to v2 cos beta so this is the uh, vertical based on the uh, velocity triangle we take consider this vw1 vw2 so the first one so in the work done uh, we take first mass then uh, mass into momentum if we want to take momentum so mass into velocity velocity is nothing but virtual velocity uh, so for bo momentum both for um, inlet and outlet and then um, angular momentum of water striking the veins that is um, inlet is equal to rho a v1 uh, into vw1 into r1 and uh, yes momentum is nothing but rho a into v1 into vw1 outlet rho a v1 into vw2 then angular momentum of water striking the veins rho a v1 vw1 into r1 for outlet rho a v1 vw1 into r2 so next one work done uh, we are going to uh, see the torque uh, torque is nothing but rate of change of angular momentum so t is nothing but uh, torque and uh, that is nothing but change of angular momentum rho a v1 vw1 into r1 minus rho a v1 vw2 into r2 so change of momentum is nothing but initial momentum minus final momentum so if you consider uh, this uh, rho a v1 common for both inlet and outlet so initial and final then we take it as common so which is rho a v1 into vw1 into r1 minus vw2 into r2 so then work done per second that is nothing but t torque into omega so uh, rho a v1 vw1 into r1 minus vw2 r2 into omega 
so if you multiply omega if you take it inside and multiply both sides then rho a v1 so v w1 uh, r1 omega will be taken as u1 which is the linear velocity and r2 omega will be considered as u2 so u1 and u2 so further if you simplify this equation the work done per second per unit weight of water per second is nothing but rho a v1 v w1 into u1 minus v w2 into u2 into 1 by rho a v1 into g so this is the work done per second per unit weight of water then work done per second per unit weight of water per second is nothing but so then rho a v1 so will is uh, there in the numerator and denominator which uh, which are uh, which gets cancelled and v w1 u1 and v w2 u2 divided by g so work done per second per unit weight of water per second is nothing but v w1 u1 minus v w2 u2 by g so v w1 is equal to zero since uh, in our uh, inlet triangle of uh, the centrifugal pump so v w1 will be zero as the water enters in the radial direction that is what the assumption that we have taken since it uh, enters into the radial direction so v w1 will be zero if v w1 will be zero then finally minus v w2 u2 divided by g so that is our minus v w2 into u2 by g so when v w1 is equal to zero so finally the work done will be minus v w2 into u2 divided by g so this is the work done for the centrifugal compressors so moving on to this heads of centrifugal pumps so if you look at it so we have um, this is the position where the suction pipe and delivery pipe uh, whereas vs is equal to velocity of fluid in suction pipe vd is equal to velocity of fluid in the delivery pipe hs is equal to suction head hd is equal to delivery head hfs is equal to head loss in the suction pipe hft is equal to h losses in the delivery pipe hst is equal to static head so if you look at this uh, heads of the centrifugal pump the first portion from the suction level to the eye of the impeller will be taken as so in the it is clearly uh, given in this particular diagram so we we can see that so there is a sump level where the suction pipe is immersed and then delivery pipe is uh, fixed in the uh, overhead tank and there is a pump from the sump level to the eye of the impeller so that is nothing but a suction head hs from the eye of the impeller of the pump uh, to the delivery uh, tank level that is nothing but delivery head hd and both the combination hs plus hd will be your total head hs capital hs and then below the sump level is nothing but hfs plus vs square by 2g above the delivery level which is hfd plus vd square by 2g so considering these two uh, hfs and hfd so it will be called as a manometric head hm so this is the these are the different heads that we come across in the centrifugal pump okay guys so this will be continued in the in my next video thank you for watching this video